for the longest time, we haven't had a ton of tools in our toolbox for RSV. Um, there was an, uh, is an antibody product called palivizumab, um, which is really reserved for some of the highest risk uh, young children that we take care of. Um, and that's given as a shot every month uh, during the RSV season. That is especially exciting for us in pediatrics because uh, vaccinating pregnant women, especially in the second or third trimester of pregnancy, can protect babies during that time when they're most vulnerable for developing severe illness with RSV, which is usually kind of in the first six to 12 months of life. RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, this is a relatively common virus uh, that we see used to be quite seasonal in the fall and winter, um, but over the COVID years, we've seen some changes in that seasonality with seasons starting earlier or ending later than usual. Um, last year, we saw a big surge in RSV infections. We saw a lot of kids end up in hospital here um, with serious illness with RSV. Um, it's always a little bit unpredictable. RSV, when it presents in young infants or babies, which is one of the populations that we really worry about it, um, and can present initially with cold type symptoms, maybe some cough, runny nose, fever, um, but in these young children it tends to move down into the chest and cause something called bronchiolitis or inflammation of the small airways um, in the lungs. When that happens, kids can have uh, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, um, they can have to use more of their muscles to breathe and can get tired from having to do that. Um, and when that happens, their oxygen levels can drop. So this can result in things like uh, cyanosis or blueness around the, the lips, um, lethargy, difficulty feeding. And so really important if parents are noticing some of those findings that they seek medical care right away.